with cash. Over the past decades, money has become increasingly regulated. The regulation began basically 40 years ago, about 40 years ago, when the government came to realize that it needed more ammunition. Uh, and I'm giving you context so you can really understand what the money laws are about, the money laundering laws and the disclosure laws. Where is our country coming from? And why does our country, does law enforcement, treat them so seriously? More than 40 years ago, there were no money laundering laws as such. But the money laundering laws began really in an entirely different context. They began in the context of the government's investigation of gangsters, in the context of the government's investigation of drug dealers, and it began with some very simple regulations. It began with, uh, I guess by now, the very well-known regulation about reports having to do with $10,000 transactions uh, with banks. And from there, from there began, over the past, since 40 years, a cat and mouse game between the government and between the gangsters and the drug dealers. Every time the government would pass a regulation, these people would, would spend all night and try to figure out a way around those regulations. Each time, the Congress came back stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger, and closing out all of the loopholes. The regulations involving money are complex. Many of them are complex. When you understand the reason for these regulations, it is simple. It is exceedingly simple to abide by those laws and to stay within the realm of proper conduct here in the United States. There are two themes, and some of this will sound, will sound a little bit like what we've heard from the prior speakers. Uh, but there are two themes that pervade the money laundering statutes. The first is simple honesty and integrity and the need to abide by criminal laws generally. This is easy in concept and it is certainly easy for people of our firm community to abide by American laws generally. Why? The source of American law, the source of the law of every civilized society is total law. That is the source, the ultimate source when one goes back into history, that is the source of American law. Don't steal, don't lie, don't kill, don't hurt, don't defraud. All of these concepts do not need to be told to an audience such as we have here tonight. So the first issue, the first issue is, is to abide by American law. Now American law, federal law, the state laws, they contain books and books and books and books. Uh, volumes, libraries, but they're all the same. They're all the same. One book has to do with a theft of this kind, and another statute has to do with a theft of another kind, and one has to do with perjury in a court, and one has to do with lying to the police, but they're all the same, and they're all easily recognizable. The first basic principle again, that you have to adhere to in order to avoid a conflict with the money laundering statutes is simple honesty and integrity that will prevent you from becoming involved in the predicate conduct to which money laundering offenses attach. The second principle, major principle, is transparency. Transparency meaning openness and straightforwardness 
in our affairs. And the plain fact of the matter is, if you conduct your affairs honestly, you don't try to deceive others. And if you understand, as you've heard from all the speakers tonight, you don't try to deceive the government, you're paying your taxes, the transparency element follows. It should not be a problem at all for anyone here. Any observant Jew, any observant Jew who conducts his affairs, who conducts his life in accordance with holy principles, will automatically, automatically be abiding by almost every American law that there is. Back to money law. As I said, as recently as 40 years ago, uh, there were no money laundering statutes as such. The government needed more bullets in its weapon. Really, at the time, the principal concern had to do with drug dealers and and, and, and gangsters and, and members of organized crime and the like. But you really need to understand that it is very difficult to draft a statute uh, that, that is not a general application. There's one law, there's one law for all. So now these money laundering statutes came into being. As I was saying, the very first statute in something called the Bank Secrecy Act, there was a disclosure type requirement. If you went to the bank and you took out $10,000 or $11,000 or you deposited $10,000 or $11,000, a report had to be filed. Simple enough. And that was a novelty because before that happened, before that statute was passed, criminals were walking into banks with suitcases full of cash. And the bank's only obligation, its only perceived obligation, was to accurately count the cash. And there were no questions that were being asked of anyone. So now this, all of a sudden, an inroad is being made. So now we, now we have this statute of about $10,000 deposits. And the first thing that happens is that the criminals are working their way around it. And they end up in a, in, in, in a concept called structuring. In the colloquial, it's called smurfing. And what that is, is if you have $11,000, you don't put it in the bank. What you do is you put $5,000 into one account and $6,000 into another. Or you put $5,000 in one branch and $6,000 in another branch, and thereby you avoid, you avoid reports. The government tightened that up. The Congress tightened that up. Structuring now became a crime. Now, as I'm describing all of this, these are ongoing crimes. When I say ongoing crimes, these are currently crimes, meaning the failure uh, to, to file a proper report uh, in the context of these banking transactions or the intentional structuring of transactions in order to avoid filing one of these reports is a crime. So now they dealt with structuring, and now, as the government is an auction and it, and it wants to know what happened, so the gangsters became auction. And they figured out other ways. Well, I guess we can't put it into a bank. Let's put it into a casino. Let's go to a check cashier. Let's buy a piece of real estate. And bid by bid by bid. As, as people started thinking and figuring out ways to try to get around the government's determination to know what was going on, more and more laws and more and more regulations became passed. The basic